Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners, this is a video for the subject of education, for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of child development and learning. This video is going to focus on Bruner's views on learning where we are going to study the Bruner's theory of cognitive development. This video lecture has been recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator for this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. She is also the presenter of this video. The academic expert or reviewer for this video is Professor Jaseem Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha channels of MHRD New Delhi. Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at IASC Faculty of Education Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi and today we are going to have a discussion on Bruner's views on learning and this lecture is going to cover the theory of cognitive development which is given by Bruner. So first of all, let us discuss uh, some of the points related to Jerome Seymour Bruner. Bruner was born in 1915 and he died in 2016. He was an American psychologist who made significant contributions to human cognitive psychology and cognitive learning theory in educational psychology. Bruner was a very senior research fellow at the New York University School of Law. He received his education from Duke University and Harvard University. He taught and did research at Harvard University, the University of Oxford, and New York University. A review of general psychology, it's a journal basically. Uh, th this survey which is done by and published in this uh, review of general psychology, uh, which was published in 2002, ranked Bruner as the 28th most cited psychologist of the 20th century. Bruner has done a lot of work and his works were published also. And uh, let us just uh, see a few of his uh, most popular works. Uh, so the first one which I would like to mention is A Study of Thinking, which was published in 1956, then The Process of Education in 1960, then towards a theory of instructions in 1966, then the process of cognitive growth in 1968, and the relevance of education in 1971. The Culture of Education was again published in 1996 and recognized for their worth and contribution towards the development of psychological principles and educational applications to a large extent. So now let us see uh, his theory, the theory of cognitive development. So Bruner was concerned with cognitive psychology. So his particular interest in the cognitive development of children, uh, actually uh, how the uh, thought representations and modes of different thought representations are done, this was the uh, most important interest which he had. So this, this interest gave birth to a theory of cognitive development, which is popularly known as Bruner's theory of cognitive development. So let us have a discussion uh, on the views which he has given uh, under his theory. So the first point which, which I would like to mention here is that Bruner at the earlier stages of his uh, cognitive views on the development of children was very much influenced with the Piaget's stages of cognitive development. And we have already discussed the different stages given by Piaget. 
in a separate lecture so just to make a recall to understand this particular topic more properly you can go ahead and see the lecture which is based on piaget's uh, different stages of cognitive development so uh, on the lines of piaget's uh, stages uh, pruner proposed that human intellectual ability develops in stages from infancy to adulthood through step by step process or uh, the progress takes place step by step and uh, the mind is used in a step by step manner however bruner's theory of cognitive development cannot be treated as stage theory uh, like as is it can't be uh, stated as a stage theory because like in case of piaget's uh, stage theory of cognitive development we have seen a different sort of uh, Uh, things which piaget has given there were uh, four stages there were uh, different uh, stages which were signified by the age group but in this case in case of bruner uh, he credited to suggest that children gradually acquire cognitive skills referred by bruner as modes of thinking or modes of representing or symbolizing human thoughts so according to bruner bruner named different uh, modes of thinking basically he gave three modes of thinking for this purpose for the purpose of actually uh, providing a kind of uh, um, overview on the uh, process of cognitive development he said that there are three modes of thinking the first step or first mode is the inactive mode the second one is iconic mode and the third one is symbolic mode so let us see that what exactly is there in the first mode of thinking which is known as the inactive mode so according to bruner this mode the inactive mode of representing thoughts is the beginning or initial stage of a child's cognitive development it may be recognized as a characteristic of an infant's cognitive development in the early years in this mode one person thinks in terms of physical manipulation of all those things and events of the environment of his or her environment here the physical presence of a thing or event is essential for having its thought in the mind so here whenever a person this child is thinking about anything it should be the thing with, uh, according to uh, bruner whatever thing is being uh, thought by this uh, child this thing should be in front of him or her so if the child is willing to think about a pen then the pen should be in front of him then only he can think about the pen so this mode of thinking makes one learn by repeatedly manipulating a thing or action in its physical terms so infants are therefore uh, seen to rely extensively upon inactive modes to learn so as they learn uh, to roll over like to actually uh, uh, go ahead and uh, make all those movements they used to sit up they used to walk they learn to do so through their own actions that is the repeated physical manipulation of a particular activity so they learn through the repeated manipulations of different activities due to the presence of inactive mode most of the activities of small children are motor activities this should be kept in mind that these children actually use their motor skills they acquire to learn all those things only through the motor activities so bruner further clarified that this mode of thinking uh, an initial stage of thinking or way of acquiring skills through the use of a person's cognitive ability is although present in people of all ages yet it is more dominant when a person is young so uh, our learning of uh, tying our shoe laces or maybe driving our car or a bike is easier for us when we are young then once we try to learn all these things in later ages or in old age it becomes difficult for us that is why we go ahead and teach all those skills to the youngsters 
so uh, an active mode of thinking overall helps us in the development of motor capacities and includes activities such as using a tool or a device so you can see that nowadays the mobile phones if you give a mobile phone to a toddler to a small child the child will be in a position to actually make all those uh, uh, changes um, and open all those apps or games but if this mobile phone is given to an elderly person for him or her it will be difficult to actually use this device so this is basically the use of this inactive mode which is being easier for the young child so this is the first type of the inactive mode is the first type of cognitive skill that bruner suggested that babies are able to use and uh, it it actually if you just compare this uh, particular mode of thinking with the uh, piaget's uh, sensory motor stage uh, you can find a lot of similarities so in the sensory motor stage where children uh, may be seen learning by manipulating things and repeating movements by learning the thing in their environment so it can be compared with the stage of sensory motor uh, like the sensory motor stage of piaget this inactive mode of bruner can be compared now let us see the next stage the next stage is named as the next mode of thinking is named as the iconic mode by bruner so an icon is something that is visual and in this way iconic mode of thinking according to bruner involves building on our part a picture or visual image of a thing being experienced in our mind so here you have to just uh, make a kind of uh, visualization whenever uh, a person is in this iconic mode visualization is the most important thing to do so this mode of thinking follows the inactive mode of thinking it, it actually comes after the inactive mode of thinking and uh, that's why you can say that the iconic representation normally begins to initiate during childhood just after infancy is actually over so as a result children may be able to shut up their eyes and imagine the room they are in so if you ask a student uh, like a, a small child uh, in who is in school and you just ask him to close eyes and uh, just uh, imagine that you are in a uh, in a playground then this child will be in a position to do this so they can also imagine a triangular or or, or a circular or a rectangular plot uh, if they if they have learned that what exactly is a triangle or the shape of triangle or how circle looks like or how this uh, rectangle is actually shaped then if the teacher asks them to imagine then they can imagine and even they can uh, draw the figure or a picture uh, for the teacher or if the teacher draws any any image of any of these shapes on the blackboard or demonstrate um, these shapes through uh, any of the teaching aids they will tell the name of that particular shape so in in just contrast to the involvement of motor capacities in the inactive mode iconic mode is characterized by the involvement of the sensory capacities for the acquisition of knowledge and doing things that is why most of the activities of the children in the age group of 2 to 7 years are guided by their mental visualization and imagery they are able to form their own mental images and express themselves on that basis so while drawing um, an analogy or while making a comparison with piaget's developmental stage uh, we can say that the iconic mode of uh, thinking relates very much with piaget's pre operational stage so it can be uh, compared with the pre operational stage given by piaget so now let us see the third mode of thinking which is uh, called by bruner as the symbolic mode the so symbolic mode of thought representation follows the iconic and the inactive modes here the child may begin to use symbols particularly the language in place of visuals and 
physical representations of things and events so he or she now develops ability to understand and work with concepts that are abstract in nature so we can say the abstraction is now started so this person this child is now having a mental sense of time and distance and make use of his or her reasoning and symbolic representation particularly in terms of language as a means not only for representing the experiences but also for transforming these experiences into practical so in symbolic mode uh, thinking can take place without its direct experience on our part for taking for example we may listen to any of the news any of the news clippings on radio and retain the information even though we have not directly witnessed the events which were mentioned on the radio because radio is just an auditory, auditory medium so we have just listened to the news which we have uh, got from the uh, radio in audio form but still we are in a position to visualize the things which we have just heard so while drawing an a comparison or an analogy with piaget's developmental stages uh, we can be uh, seeing that the symbolic mode of thinking may be equated with piaget's operational stages and may be roughly linked with the cognitive development of the children belonging to the pre adolescence and adolescence age group so bruner's model of cognitive development presents before us a synthesized picture of inactive skills which are actually all these skills comprise the manipulation of objects or the spatial awareness then the next is iconic skills which comprise visual recognition the ability to compare and contrast and these symbolic skills which are related to the abstract reasoning so we can see that uh, bruner's model actually synthesized the picture of all these three skills for being used by an individual for performing or learning an intellectual task so bruner in this connection put a heavy emphasis on strengthening all the three modes of thinking in their proper combination for seeking maturity in terms of a person's cognitive development Bruner was critical of Piaget's underestimation of the importance of culture, social interaction and language in the cognitive development of children. So as a result, he tried to pay due attention on the environmental and experiential factors influencing each individual's specific cognitive development pattern and in this particular connection while differing from piaget he actually agreed with vygotsky we have seen in a separate lecture which was fully based on vygotsky's theories that vygotsky theory has given this theory where social interaction then uh, the importance of culture the importance of language was too much emphasized it was a kind of means for cognitive development so here bruner said that these can't be ignored when we are talking about the cognitive development pattern of a child so in this connection he differed with piaget's theory which has not given any kind of importance to social interaction and he agreed with vygotsky and he tried to emphasize few of the points uh, which can be uh, which can be said that these are the points which were given by bruner in terms of his cognitive development theory let us see all these points which have which are uh, in connection with the bruner's views on the cognitive development theory so the first view which has been given by bruner is that interpersonal communication is quite essential for the desired cognitive development of the children interpersonal communication means when the children interact with each other with the society with the peer group with the parents with the teachers so this is must this is the must whenever this child is interacting and making an interpersonal communication with the society 
automatically the cognitive development is going to begin. Then the next one is cognitive development of children is much helped through active intervention of experts, parents, teachers and peers who are at higher level of the cognitive development which again can be uh, just looked at whenever we are talking about the Vygotsky's theory we have seen that there was the concept of more knowledgeable other the concept of uh, zone of proximal development so you can see that here this uh, more uh, like more knowledgeable other is in the form of expert or parent or teacher or peer is actually acknowledged his or her uh, importance in the cognitive development, the higher level of cognitive development is acknowledged by Bruner also. The next point is that cognitive development is much help in case we adults try to develop reciprocal behavior or reciprocal communication or reciprocal dialogue with the child. So here you, he actually mentions Bruner's, uh, Bruner actually uh, emphasizes that the discussion or making a dialogue with the children by the elders is very much important. Then the next point which he has emphasized on is the development of language plays a very important role. So development of language plays a quite substantial role in the cognitive development of children. It is an important tool and vehicle for carrying out the thought process. So limitation in language causes limitation in thoughts. So therefore, due care should be provided from the very beginning for the proper development of linguistic and communication abilities among the children. So how social interaction coupled with language acquisition is helpful in the gradual development of cognitive abilities may be understood through few of the more uh, like points which uh, which are sequenced and which are proposed by Buell Gruner. We will just discuss all those because uh, we also can experience this that language is the first and the foremost important tool for actually starting a teaching or training of any child. So if the language is not uh, properly developed, then even the initiation will be difficult. So Bruner has given a lot of importance on the uh, development of language. In terms of this, he has given so, uh, uh, some of the sequences or he has proposed some of the sequences which we can follow whenever we are trying to develop the cognitive abilities of a child. So what he, he said that games and rituals form the basis of the birth of pre-linguistic thoughts among the children. What does it mean? That whenever we are actually playing with the children, with the small children, uh, or we are following anything which is ritualistic, these things, the game or this particular ritual is actually a kind of small training which can be a training of pre-linguistic nature. So that also plays very important role in the language development of children. Then he said that uh, the thought provoking agencies are gradually replaced by the adults interaction that adds new information in the cognitive structure of the children. So the child, whatever thought provoking uh, things happen, like if you have, you are um, telling a story to a child. So what will happen, the child will listen to you and there will be certain symbols, there will be certain things which will be actually uh, actively uh, engaged or uh, developing in his or her mind. And these thoughts, will be gradually uh, replaced by this particular cognitive structure which we are trying to develop in this child. So this adult interaction is also very much emphasized by Brunner. As we have seen that he is talking about the more, in a way he is talking about the more knowledgeable other thing which was uh, mentioned by Vygotsky. So he has given due acknowledgement to this. Then the next point which he says, that with the learning of language, the communication and interaction with the adults and peers 
receives a needful boost for carrying out the task of cognitive development on the desired lines so what exactly this means that uh, with the learning of language the communication and interaction with the adults and peers is actually uh, it will take a kind of boost so whenever this child will be interacting with the elders or or anybody there will be certain developments which are actually happening side by side and which will be actually very much desired for the cognitive development of the child so this is something these are few of the point, points uh, through which bruner has shown the consonance with the theory of vygotsky which actually acknowledges a lot of things related to the cognitive development so with this now we will be discussing the educational implications of the theory of bruner so on the basis of what has been said uh, up till now the educational implications of the theory of uh, cognitive development which is given by bruner we are not now going to discuss so the first educational in implication can be that uh, the teachers and the parents should recognize and know about the nature and importance of all the three modes of thoughts or thought representations we have seen that there is uh, an active there is iconic and symbolic mode so uh, this theory basically gives a lot of emphasis on these three modes of thought representation so uh, they must be capitalized on these modes according uh, according to the need or uh, for the development of the capacities and abilities of their students or their children so for example a proper emphasis and utilization of an active mode uh, of thinking may be helpful in the development of motor capacities and the mechanical skills like using any of the tools or devices so among the students we can actually uh, if we know about or if we are um, aware of uh, that uh, about this inactive mode of thinking then we can uh, use these uh, these particular Uh, thought processes in the development of the motor capacities of our children so similarly emphasis on the utilization of iconic mode may prove helpful in the development of sensory and imaginary capacities and symbolic mode may help in the development or the uh, developing the ability of abstraction and higher order thinking skills so this is the first educational implication the second can be that um, as advised by bruner uh, we should not think that inactive iconic or symbolic mode is the monopoly of a particular developmental period or specific age group we have seen that uh, these things were di were discussed by piaget in terms of a specific age groups but actually bruner differed with piaget in this particular point so a mental task or uh, activity uh, requiring the use of cognitive skills may demand the use of one or the other type of thinking mode so in such a situation it is advisable to the teachers to make use of a single mode or combination of modes for making their students understand a concept or undertake a task in a proper way so this view point emphasized by jerome bruner has been responsible for the use of multimedia approach in the field of education we have seen we have seen that uh, multimedia where we are using different type of media as teaching aid or as the means of teaching um, of to to children and it has proven to be very much effective so uh, as bruner has said that it is not at all related to any specific age we can use any of these mode of thinking at any age uh, age of uh, children to teach them to actually uh, make them acquiring all those skills so this has given uh, a kind of uh, boost to uh, use the multimedia approach in the field of education so this was the next educational implication the third or the next uh, educational implication can be that uh, we have seen the three modes of uh, thinking uh, thinking or the thought process the inactive the iconic and the symbolic mode of thinking and reasoning according to bruner so uh, 
actually they present uh, to some extent at all the ages and periods of development and uh, they are found to be dominated at some specific developmental periods uh, like in case of inactive mode of thinking it is dominated in the infancy and early childhood similarly the iconic and the symbolic modes of thinking are more dominant in the childhood and adolescence um, respectively like the the uh, symbolic mode is more uh, prominent in adolescence and the iconic uh, mode of thinking is much more prominent in the childhood so it is therefore uh, you can say that it is very much imperative that the educational experiences and methods must be planned and organized in view of the thinking mode of inactive iconic and symbolic nature for the learners belonging to infancy childhood and adolescence so we can say that uh, it can be expected uh, that much in terms of the motor development and motor skills from the child belonging to infancy and development of sensory and imagery uh, abilities from the child belonging to childhood and development of abstract reasoning on the part of adolescence so we can see that consecutively we can use these uh, modes of thinking skills in these age groups to actually let them learn or let them acquire this specific skills so uh, we can say that uh, uh, if, where education of the children belonging to infancy and childhood should involve concrete objects and use of audio visual material the students belonging to the age of adolescence may be uh, may, may have uh, a bit grown up so they can uh, go ahead and use their uh, capability or uh, the abilities of taking advantage from the abstraction so they can go for abstract thinking and use of reasoning and other higher order cognitive abilities so for them we can uh, manage for a different type of teaching aids which are actually age appropriate for them and can be used for making them uh, much more uh, reason uh, reasoning uh, ability can be uh, can be acquired in them uh, the abstract thinking can be much more enhanced in them so this can be like uh, these uh, uh, different modes of uh, thinking skills and th thinking and reasoning uh, given by bruner can be actually used for selecting the different means and different uh, type of teaching aids for the children of different age groups or different stages now let us see the next uh, point which can be emphasized here as the uh, educational implication so we have seen that bruner has emphasized that development of the children uh, including the cognitive development is best possible if the learners are made to construct and discover their knowledge by their own selves by themselves so accordingly if the teacher uh, should act as a facilitator for providing opportunities and the needed help to the students for seeking knowledge they must treat education as the knowledge getting process and should avoid pouring knowledge directly into the minds of their students so it is very much needed that no spoon feeding or no direct teaching should be done as a teacher we just have to make the situation very much valuable very much uh, very much like likely where a child can learn whatever we teachers are trying uh, to make them learn so we just have to make the situations accordingly and the child will himself or herself uh, with the use of all those facilitations will be acquiring the knowledge or will be uh, constructing his or her own knowledge so this was um, something this is something which is actually uh, emphasized by bruner and can be uh, used this this particular uh, point can be used by our educational administrators our teachers very much whenever they are acquiring a type a teaching style or a means of teaching in the classroom the next point is that uh, uh, as we have seen that bruner has emphasized that one can be a person can be successful in going higher and higher in the course of a person's cognitive development in case one uh, person is ready or is interested as well as busy in utilizing 
his or her cognitive structure which is already developed cognitive skill and acquired experiences for gaining new information knowledge and skills as we have seen that uh, this was also emphasized in the zone of proximal development zpd given by vygotsky because here bruner has appreciated vygotsky uh, in many terms so, so here he say he says that uh, whatever the child has learned earlier that is also of so much important and whatever new he or she is going to learn in future is actually build up on the premise of what he or she has learned earlier so a teacher therefore should try to seek active participation and involvement in this child's or the student's uh, teaching learning process uh, he should also try to make use of his prior experiences and existing cognitive structure for planning and organizing appropriate learning experiences and methodology of teaching which is going to suit uh, the nature and level of cognitive development of the teachers uh, students like all those students whom this teacher is going to actually uh, teach so in this way the teacher can actually uh, get access to all those prior experiences of a child and then on the basis of all those previous experiences the teacher can actually devise the learning methodology or the uh, learning style or all those teaching aids so basically this teacher is going to excel in teaching this child if he or she is aware of all those previous experiences which are gained by the student now let us see the next uh, educational implication uh, suitability of the curricular or the co curricular experiences count much for seeking proper cognitive development of the students and this can be just taken as vice versa which means that if we uh, we seek proper cognitive development of the students then their curricular and co curricular experiences are going to develop more so bruner suggested that the use of spiral curriculum for gaining maximum benefit on uh, on actually developing the cognitive structure is very much beneficial so uh, the curricular or the curriculum developing authorities the curriculum developers should initiate some concepts and things suitable to early ages in the lower classes and gradually build up the knowledge concerning these topics in the subsequent higher classes by allowing the students for the repetition of material learned in the previous classes so that all what is learned at present or previous classes may be available for them to have continuous increase in their cognitive potential so the spiral curriculum can be Uh, very much utilized in in this uh, spiral curriculum what we do initial level we do uh, give some of those uh, topics at a lesser difficulty level and we um, as soon as like we go ahead in the classes in the uh, and the age is also um, now increased so we start increasing the difficulty level of the topic and we go it in part, like we can uh, give the the topic in parts at different different uh, age groups and if different different levels so in this way the repetition is also going on and the increase of the difficulty level actually makes the student uh, learn any topic in much more proper way so this is Uh, something which is also emphasized by bruner for using the spiral curriculum so now let us try to see few more of the educational implications of bruner's theory so bruner's theory of cognitive development has tried to provide a quite big importance to the cognitive process and cognitive theories of learning for the purpose of needed development and attainment of educational objectives at any age of the developmental period so we can say that it is imperative for the teachers to make use of the methods and processes which are suggested by bruner for actually uh, going ahead and uh, making uh, the use of all these uh, things which are suggested by him and uh, getting the better outcomes of their teaching endeavors so we as a teacher should try to learn uh, to make use of bruner's cognitive methods and means like discovery method the use of discovery method 
inquiry approach, the concept attainment model, uh, then the uh, dialogue and discussion method, constructive learning methods, uh, which which are like uh, using the cooperative and constructivist learning uh, methodologies. So all these things are actually given by uh, like to certain extent have been uh, proposed by Bruner's uh, uh, different views. So we can you make use of as a teacher, we can make use of all these approaches. And in this way, we can make our teaching learning process much more effective. Then Bruner gave uh, a lot of stress on the role of language and social interaction in the development of children. So we as a teacher should uh, actually pay uh, much more emphasis on the development of these skills, the skills which are mentioned in or come under, under the category of linguistic abilities and communication skills so that the student may harvest or all those rich kind of dividends from, uh, with, with the utilization of all these abilities in the acquisition of knowledge and development of their cognitive potentials. Language is very much important. Communication without communication, if even the child is knowing a lot, without communication, this child is not going to excel in whatever streams he or she is going. So as a teacher, we need to focus on the communication skills, on the linguistic abilities to a quite a like major extent. Now, so here the next point which can be discussed is that Bruner has emphasize the importance of culture, social interaction, and guidance of the elders or the those who are the more knowledgeable other. Though this term is given by Vygotsky, but Bruner has also actually mentioned that uh, the, uh, the companionship of elders is very much helpful for the development of children. So we can say that, the, uh, that it is needed on our part to organize the content material, the methodology of teaching, the teaching learning environment in such a way which can be uh, helpful, which is actually going to facilitate and help on the part of us, the elders, the teachers, including all those teachers who actually are involved in the teaching learning process, which is going to help our learners to make use of all those things and do the maximum development of their different skills, including the cognitive development. So this is something which is to be taken care of. The last but not the least point which we can mention that the teacher must learn the art of making use of the existing cognitive structure or potential of the students in terms of a proper synthesis of their inactive, iconic, and symbolic modes of reasoning. For example, a teacher is, who is aiming to help children learning about about a, about a uh, organism who is uh, extinct, like a dinosaur, uh, could use all these three modes in a synthesized form. So we, as a teacher, uh, are willing to actually teach the child about a organism which can't be seen nowadays who is extinct like a dinosaur so how, what we can do we can synthesize all these three modes for this purpose the teacher can ask the students to construct more or like different models of dinosaurs then uh, he can make the students to watch a film or a small clip over the you uh, know any of the platforms about the uh, the dinosaurs where he is actually involving the inactive uh, type of uh, thinking process then uh, the teacher can uh, actually uh, dif consult different reference texts and then discuss their findings with the child so here uh, the iconic and the symbolic uh, thinking process is being used so in this way, we can see that whenever we are trying to uh, teach something which is highly abstract in nature, uh, making use of all these three modes of thinking will be the best way to teach our students. So in fact, in this way, uh, Bruner thought his progressive ideas and uh, theories 
contributed a lot in improving the process and the products of education aimed towards the maximum development of the student's cognitive potential. So this is something uh, which is very much important and uh, we consider that the contribution of Bruner in terms of the uh, cognitive development is actually tremendous. Now, now let us uh, discuss few more points which are related to uh, different developments which are done by Bruner in terms of the cognitive uh, development theory. Bruner has also uh, given the concepts which are related to cognitive constructivism. So Bruner, who was a cognitive psychologist, uh, is also credited for propagating the views related to the philosophy of constructivism. His constructivism is considered a blend of both the individual and the social constructivism. So both of the forms of constructivism has been actually acknowledged by Brunner. So in, uh, in the approach of Brunner, he actually asserted that a child can uh, acquire useful knowledge only when this child is provided with the opportunities of constructing or discovering it by himself through his or her independent interaction with the environment or assisted by some guided attention and attempt on the part of some of the elders. So he named this type of learning as discovery learning. So in such type of knowledge, construction process or self-learning according to Brunner, the learner must be active. He must go ahead for identifying creep, uh, like all those key principles for himself or herself by playing the role of an independent inquirer and discoverer of the knowledge. Uh, this child should refrain uh, himself or herself from accepting what is being told, what is being presented or explained by the teacher unless he or she makes himself convinced about the truth and existence of such type of knowledge which is being taught by the teacher. So emphasizing for his learning a key role of constructing and discovering the knowledge, Brunner did not at all forget the role of parents, teachers and elders in assisting the learner in his or her mission. So according to Brunner, learner is not always alone in the knowledge construction task. He or she may be usefully assisted and guided by those who are knowledgeable. So in his discovery learning and concept attainment model, Brunner expected from the teachers to present examples and the students to work with the examples until the students are able to discover meaning from the presented facts or gain useful concepts. So he, he uh, also pointed out that in the knowledge construction or discovery task, the student may work in two different ways. In first way or in, in the first uh, step, they work on their own to very great extent by interacting with the environment and manipulating things by themselves. So a kind of individual approach to constructivism. And in the other uh, step or way, uh, which, which, can be, uh, which can be considered as the guided discovery, this child is helped and guided by the teachers or the elders or the parents or anybody who can be uh, a helpful figure uh, to actually complete his or her task. So in this way, Brunner has given uh, the cognitive constructivism. So this is which is actually very much important whenever we are talking about Brunner, Brunner's uh, cognitive approach of learning. So now let us summarize what we have learned today. We have seen uh, the Brunner's theory of cognitive development, uh, which is much like Piaget's theory proposes that there are three stages of sequential steps for the development of intellectual abilities among children. Brunner named them as inactive, iconic and symbolic modes of thinking or symbolizing human thoughts. Here, the inactive mode of representing uh, thought is the beginning or initial stage of a child's cognitive development. Infants may be uh, therefore seen to rely extensively upon inactive mode, which allows them to think in terms of physical manipulation 
of the things and events of their environment. This stage actually fits well uh, or you can say that it can be compared with Piaget's sensory motor stage. Then comes the iconic mode of thinking which involves the building on a, a person's part a picture or visual image of a thing being experienced in a person's mind. Since this mode of thinking follows the inactive mode, normally it begins to develop among the children in the age group of around two to seven years or we can say that in the childhood. So they are guided by their mental visualization and imagining. So in this way, Bruner's iconic mode of thinking relates uh, very much with the, you can say that it, it, is, uh, it can be compared to Piaget's pre-operational stage. Then comes the next uh, mode, which is symbolic mode of thought representation, followed by the iconic and the inactive modes. Uh, here, the child may begin to use symbols, particularly the language, in place of visuals and physical representations of things and events. This child can now develop the ability to understand and use the concepts that are abstract in nature. This mode of thinking, uh, we can say that may be equated or can be compared with Piaget's operational stages uh, linked with the pre-adolescence and adolescence stages. So Brunner, like we have seen that uh, while providing sequential steps by dividing thought process into three distinct modes of thinking, uh, does not relate each mode of uh, uh, mode or make it strictly confined to a specific period of childhood uh, development, which was um, which was seen in the case of Jean Piaget. We have seen that Jean Piaget has made a kind of close compartmentalization of the age groups while talking about the uh, cognitive development. But here, Brunner has not given these type of uh, compartmentalization. So he says that uh, although each of these uh, three modes may be dominant during specific developmental phases, but still they remain present and accessible throughout the lifespan. So as a result, these three modes of thinking are always present in a lesser or greater degree in the execution of a task involving cognitive abilities in a person's life. So in this way, we can see that um, different type of uh, uh, these attributes can be used in different ways in the capacity of a teacher uh, a person can use all these things and there are a lot of uh, different educational implications which can be which which can be uh, scraped out through the theory which is propounded by Gruner. So we have seen all these things and we have also discussed about the uh, specific type of constructivism which is uh, which is also uh, given by Gruner. So with this, I hope that uh, the presentation and this lecture is going to be useful for you and I will be seeing you all in another session. Uh, the session on Bruner, the theories given by Bruner, I hope will be very much useful for your teaching learning process, for making your teaching learning process much more effective because as a teacher, we have to train our students uh, by using, by making at use of all these theory. The theories are made for uh, making the practical experiences much more easier and much more effective. So all these theories given by different people, given by Piaget, Vygotsky, Brunner, Kohler, uh, Kohlberg, then many more people. All these theories are to be understood in a very proper manner and to be internalized by the teacher first. And this teacher has the responsibility to enact, to actually use the, these experiences learned through the theories in the practical classroom. I hope the discussion is going to prove useful to you all. And uh, from my side, I would like to thank you for this session. See you again. Thank you so much. So students, these are few of those references and uh, sites and the literature which were referred while preparing this particular lecture. Dear students, you are watching a video which was based on Bruner's views on learning. And this lecture was particularly discussing the Bruner's theory of cognitive development. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home 
during the national lockdown period for COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thanks a lot.